So many times they're just flat and thin, but I honestly think taller and wider is the way to go. This is how I make my strawberry shortcake. I mean, just ask yourself, when biscuits are thicker, they tend to be way more tender and moist and less likely to dry out when you're baking them in the oven. I'm gonna show you a few techniques to make sure they stand up tall. We're gonna try to incorporate as much delicious fresh strawberry flavor into these as possible. Sound good? Let's bake. We are gonna kick this recipe off by making a simple syrup. So we're going to be adding one cup of sugar to a small size sauce pot, followed up with one cup of water. Let's grab that pot, go back to our burner. We're immediately going to turn the heat on to high. What we want to do is bring this mixture to a boil. It's going to get there in just a few minutes. The most important part is to make sure the sugar has been completely dissolved into the water. We're just going to let it boil for two to three minutes. Then at this point, we're going to remove it. Heading back over to our countertop, I'm going to transfer this mixture to a bowl because I want to cool it down as quickly as possible. So just pop it in the refrigerator until cool, which is going to take about 30 minutes. This is great timing though, because we can prep up a lot of other stuff. I have four cups of fresh strawberries. Don't use frozen here. They just become way too mushy in this recipe. What I do want to do though is give them a quick rinse. So I'm sure you've seen this a million times and you even practice it at home. Just run them under some cold water, run your hands through them. And then what we want to do is transfer them over to a strainer, get as much water off as possible, put them back in the bowl. Now we are heading back over to our countertop. What we need to do is remove the hull or that green stem. The way that I like to do it is by using a tomato shark, great for coring tomatoes and also for hauling strawberries. You can, of course, just use a little paring knife. I just feel the tomato shark doesn't remove as much of that flesh, means more strawberries. Just run it off the top, pull it, perfect. Now what we want to do is quarter all of these strawberries. You can, of course, slice them in half. I like to use the small quarters. It's just a nicer way to present it and smaller size, bite-sized pieces. We're next going to add about a half cup of those to a bowl, and we want to mash them using a hand masher. This is going to help release a lot of that delicious strawberry flavor. If a hand masher doesn't work, no problem. Just swap out for a fork, or you can use that from the very beginning. All we want to do is get it to this consistency. Perfect. Now add in the remaining sliced strawberries right into the mashed strawberries, and hopefully at this point, your simple syrup is cool, because what we want to do is add in three-quarter cup. I always make extra simple syrup. Because guess what? It lasts over a month in the refrigerator covered, and it's so great on so many desserts. Just mix those strawberries and the juice right in with the simple syrup and then set them to the side of the refrigerator until we're ready to use them up. Now, there are so many recipes out there that just call for adding sugar to the strawberries, and that's fine. But when you have a simple syrup and the sugar's already in liquid form, combined with the mashed strawberry, it's going to bring out so much more strawberry flavor. It's going to be that much better. All right, whipped cream time. In a stand mixer or using electric hand beaters or even your arm with a whisk and a bowl, we are going to add in two cups of ice cold heavy whipping cream. Make sure to get all that goodness in there. Next, we're only going to add in a third cup, which is different from my half cup in my usual homemade whipping cream. We're now going to add in a half teaspoon of vanilla. Fix the whisk attachment. I like to start by turning the speed onto medium. The reason I do that so whipped cream isn't flying out of there. Once I see that it begins to stabilize a little bit, I'll crank the speed onto high. We're talking maybe two to three minutes until stiff peaks are formed. It's nice, it's fluffy, it's perfect. Let's pull it up, you can see it here, excellent. At this point, what we wanna do is remove that whisk attachment, just get all the whipped cream off there into the bowl, then set it in the refrigerator until we're ready to use it up. And if you want to chill out on the amount of sugar I use in the whipped cream, totally cool. Just cut it back to a quarter cup instead of a third cup. There is plenty of sweetness in those strawberries, all right? Next up, biscuits. In a medium-sized bowl, I've got two large eggs. What we want to do is use a whisk or even a fork to scramble them. That's all we need to do is whisk these until scrambled. Now I'm going to add in one cup plus two tablespoons of ice-cold buttermilk. I love using buttermilk. You can substitute for regular whole milk or even heavy cream. Once it is whisked completely together, what I'm going to do is grab a little one ounce ladle or two tablespoons and set it to the side in a separate bowl for something else. Just set this mixture to the side for now. 
believe me, I already know. Folks down south want to string me up by my thumbs. We don't add eggs to our biscuits. All right, fine. But eggs add structure, flavor. They help make them rise. So I don't know what the fuss is about. For me, it's a net win in making sure they're delicious. Okay, let's keep going. In a separate large bowl, I have three cups of all-purpose flour. What we want to do is immediately add in two tablespoons of sugar, followed up with one teaspoon of sea salt, next a half teaspoon of baking soda, and then finally one tablespoon of baking powder. The baking powder and baking soda are what's going to help make our biscuits rise. Whisk this together until it is completely combined, set it to the side, and then for butter, what we need to do is get it into fine little pieces. And the best way I know how to do this is to grate it on a cheese grater. I have one stick plus one quarter cup stick, so 10 total ounces of ice cold unsalted butter. Grate it right on there. I like to do it, of course, on parchment paper, just like I do cheese. We're going to transfer that into our dry ingredient mixture, get all that butter in there. It's going to add so much flavor and goodness. And using a spatula, just completely combine all those ingredients. Now, at this point, what we want to do is make a well right in the center. So just use the back side of your hand, make that well. Go grab that buttermilk and egg mixture, pour it right in the center. Now, using a fork, you want to start bringing in all the dry ingredients together until it forms kind of like a very thick dough. You'll get to a point where you really can't move it around too much. We're just about there. I'm just gonna transfer it onto my cutting board or a clean surface. And what I do is sort of squeeze the ingredients together until they are combined. You don't wanna knead it because the butter will heat up. We'll sort of ruin our dough. This is perfect. Now at this point, grab a rolling pin and we wanna roll it out until it's about one inch thick. Now if it begins to get a little sticky, just dust with a little coating of flour, no problem. Now using a two inch in diameter round cookie cutter, we are going to press down and remove that first biscuit. Let's have a look at it. You can see lots of layers there. This is perfect, nice and tall, excellent. We're just going to set it to the side and then re-roll out that dough. No problem. This is how we do it. Roll it back out to an inch, make another circle round cut in there. Perfect. We should get eight total biscuits at this point. We're going to set it in a pan that's lined with parchment paper and sprayed with nonstick spray. And I just happen to have the perfect 10-inch shallow rondeau pan, but you can also use a cast iron skillet or even a 13 by 9 casserole dish. Just make sure they're in pretty tight next to each other because we want them to rise up and not fall over in the process. Okay, here's what we do now. Remember those two tablespoons of eggs and buttermilk that we whisked together? Yep, we're going to brush the tops, going to help make them brown. Sprinkle on two tablespoons of turbinado, sugar in the raw, or regular sugar right on top. It's going to help sweeten them up a little bit. We're going in the oven at 375 degrees convection fan on this time or 400 degrees Fahrenheit. No fan. They're going to cook for in between 25 and 30 minutes. Let's take them out. Have a look perfectly golden brown. We're going to cool them down to room temperature and let's have a look in the inside. Tender, moist, fluffy, perfect biscuits. It's so simple and it's always delicious. This is one of my all time favorite spring and summer desserts like ever. A little bit of basic fundamental baking techniques combined with some fun, a little bit of intuition, and you've got one dang tasty strawberry shortcake. All right, pay close attention because here's how we plate this up. I want this stacked high in three layers. You could, of course, just do two layers, no problem. But what we do need to do is slice it so we have three pieces. We're going to place it on a plate. You could serve it in a bowl if you'd like. Place on a nice heaping spoonful of that heavy whipped cream. Then what we're going to do is add on a nice spoonful of our strawberries. We put on that middle biscuit and then we repeat the process over again. Whipped cream, lots of strawberries and a little bit of that liquid. That stuff is gold. So, so good. Let it stay on there. No problem. Top it off with the top biscuit, a little bit more whipped cream. And then I've got some sliced strawberries. I show you how to do this in my lava cake video and a couple different ways to do it. Check that out if you want to see how I did this. And then I like to finish it off with a nice garnish of fresh mint. Nice little green there. And this part is optional, but give it a dusting of powdered sugar. It gives it a nice fresh look. Now the other option is there's plenty of that liquid left over with the strawberries. This stuff is so delicious. Pour it on top, pour it around, doesn't matter. Use it up. It's absolutely fantastic. Not only is it delicious, it's absolutely stunning. And if you love the combination with fruit and dessert, you have to try out my fresh berries and creme anglaise. It is so, so good. You won't even believe it. I'll see you on there.